Happy New Year! Hi, I'm Jem, an end myopia student following Jake Steiner's end myopia method to get back to 2020 vision and life without glasses. It's all based on science, not magic, and you'll find some links in the description down below. Some people hate New Year's resolutions. They think it's just something to fail at. But for me, I actually love the new year and setting intentions. So they're not exactly the same as resolutions because it's not like as of this day, arbitrarily decided by a calendar, I'm gonna act in a completely different way without fail. For me, I like to set intentions for the year and goals so that I can make sure that my behaviors and my actions are keeping me on track for what I actually want in my life. And one of my goals this year is to do with my vision, to do with my end myopia progress. So I'm just gonna take these off right now because they keep slipping down my nose. So I've been doing that a lot lately. I just, I've heated these up and bent them to try and make them hook on my ears better, but they just keep wanting to fall off. So maybe it's a sign take them off. Setting some end myopia goals for your year is a really good idea to keep you on track, especially if you've been doing end myopia for a little while now and you know the honeymoon period is over, you're like oh this is taking so long, your motivation might have been burning a bit low lately, so goals are a great way to give you some motivation just to get back on track, give you something to aim for besides many years in the future Hopefully, maybe I won't need my glasses if I keep up the habits, but I'm not because it's so far in the future So I'm just doing all the bad things because uh, it's so far away. It gets you out of that rut. Giving yourself a target helps you to recenter your focus Yes, I did that on end myopia. Jake says that if we're doing the end myopia method properly We should be able to see between 0.7 diopters and one full diopter of progress every single year. So at the moment, I know that I'm wearing minus 1.7 in the right eye and minus two in the left eye. So if in a year I have managed to make a whole diopter of progress, that would put me at wearing minus one in the left eye and minus 0.75 in the right eye, whatever my actual visual acuity is. My glasses, my normalized glasses should also be dropping about a diopter. Now I have that equalizing step that I've been fighting with for a long time and I'm gonna say that this is the year I get it done. I know it's not a big deal, but I'm gonna try again because I'm stubborn like that. So I'm going to have a goal of reducing one diopter in my left eye and just 0.7 diopters in my right eye so that I finish the year and can see in 2022 with an equalized minus one diopter correction. But setting this goal is not enough. In order to accomplish goals that you set at the beginning of a year, it's good to put milestones along the journey, small wins, small goals, frequent ones that keep you motivated and allow you to keep ticking off achievements. So I've made a little map for myself of when in the year I would like to hit my quarter of a diopter reductions. So I've been wearing these glasses for a while now, probably a couple of months. I remember getting them saying that I think all things being well I should be able to change them in December and I definitely have not kept my habits up good enough to be able to change them yet but it's not too bad I just want to get a little bit extra clarity to know that I've really hit a good acuity for these glasses so I'm gonna give myself another six weeks with this correction so I've got until mid February because I've already been wearing them for a couple of months that takes me well over the three month threshold between changes to a normalized correction. It gives me enough time to get the clarity up that I need to be ready to make another change and it also gives me a little bit of extra time to really settle into it. But only if I try, if I keep being lazy with it like I have been, then I won't make progress, obviously. So I think the six weeks is just enough to be realistic but also motivating to make it happen now, not in the future, right now matters. And I've mapped it out after that, giving myself about three and a half months per normalized reduction. 
So if I'm currently in my N 5.5s, then on the 15th of February, my goal would be to change into my N 6s. Give myself another three and a half weeks from there will take me to the beginning of June. So say on the 1st of June, perhaps I would be able to change into my N 7s, which is my seventh pair of normalized glasses. Give it another three and a half months, that would take us to mid-September. So say the 15th of September, I would hope to change into my N 8s. The N 8s would be at minus 1.25 equalized. And then another three and a half months later would get me to the 1st of January, this time in one year, changing into my N9s, which would be minus one. Now I've spaced them out pretty equally and I know that you can progress at different rates depending whether it's summer or winter, but I don't know how much sunlight we get here in winter. I imagine it's quite a fair bit, but I am finding that even though it is summer and there is loads of sunlight, I don't want to go outside. It is hot. No, you go outside and you bake. So I'm actually wondering whether winter here for someone who's lived in Tasmania for seven years might be a more friendly temperature for me to actually go out for walks and such. So I'm going to just wait and see how winter plays out here. So now I've set my big goal. I've set my small progress goals. The next thing I want to do is make a bit of a plan how I'm planning to achieve those things, what I need to do to hit those goals. And it's nothing new. It just is something that needs renewed motivation. So these things include going outside. Another thing would be for me to roster in some active focus. Now we shouldn't be doing active focus for like just a certain amount of time per day, job done, get on with your life. Active focus is for every moment of every day, whenever you think of it, check in with your vision, make sure it's as clear as you can get it. But maybe I also could benefit from just scheduling in some time every day to make sure I am doing active focus and I don't get stressed and busy and just forget about it. And the really, really big one for me, and I think for most people, limit the phone use. Like, really. I can't even emphasize to you how much smartphones are poison for your eyes. If you're doing myopia or trying to and it's just like not working for you, really challenge yourself to go a week where you only check in with your phone for 20 minutes a day. It's no apps and fun and socials or whatever. Just to check up with messages and calls, get it done. Like if you haven't given yourself a week where you seriously restrict your smartphone use, then do not tell me it's not working for you. Anyway, that's a different topic. Uh -huh. So just saying I'm going to limit my phone use can be very difficult because of all the willpower and everything involved. So don't just say no, swap it for something else. So pick an activity that you find nice, nourishing and refreshing, entertaining that you can do instead of being on your smartphone. Yeah, you might think, but I don't have time to go and do these other things. But if you don't have time to do those other things, what are you doing on your smartphone, really? I mean, I know some people use it for work, but if, it, if you're using it for work and really legitimate reasons, swap it out for an actual computer. That'll be a big improvement. If you're using it as a time waster to distract yourself from things, to give yourself more energy because you're actually really tired, guilty. Swap it out for something else that is energizing. Make yourself like a cup of tea, like make it a really nice ritual to make yourself something nice or meditate either in a structured way or in a less structured way, just by being mindful. Sometimes I found it really interesting when I've had the urge to pick up my phone, but not picked it up and instead just become really, really present in my body, in the room, really taking in the things that are around me. Yeah, it might be boring even though you're being mindful, but like, be like, how interesting, how boring this is. Why is this so boring to me? Like, what's wrong with sitting in a room? There's plenty of mindful tricks to get you away from your phone. So anyway, those are the things I'm going to use. Outside more, have some dedicated active focus time and get really serious with this phone use restriction thing. I've been really bad at it since moving 
because I've had so many emotions and just adjusting to a new environment, a new life, a new job, a new house. It's been stressful, a bit of grief of what I've lost, a bit of isolation. My phone has been such a great go-to to just shut down any feelings that I might find uncomfortable and just get lost in a game or in the socials. And it's been really helpful <laughs> for me as a bit of a, a crutch, but it's not helpful long-term. So, and definitely not for my eyes. So it's time, new year, let's make this go away. So that is me. That is my end myopia goal for the year to get down to minus one. Now I'm gonna ask you, invite you, if you are also setting some end myopia goals this year, let me know in the comments what they are. Let me know how you're breaking it up into smaller achievable checkpoints. And let me know what your plan is to achieve these. Now I wanna invite you to do this because of accountability. If you have these goals, you need to tell someone, you need to write it down, you need to get it out there. Not even so much so that they can check up on you, but so that you feel you've told people you're doing this now and you don't want to look like you said it and you didn't do it. I'm a bit scared getting all the way to minus one this year. That sounds humongous, minus one. But I'm gonna tell you guys I'm gonna do it because then I'm gonna know you're watching me to see if I do it. So use the accountability that this community can bring to us because you can tell your friends, you can tell your mom, like they'll be like, whatever. If you want real accountability, tell the End Myopia community because we're the ones who really understand what this process is, what your goals are, how you feel about it, and what you need to do to do it. Please remember, as well as commenting your goals, to like and subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified every time I post, which is kinda on Thursdays-ish, kinda. Ugh. My schedule's changed since moving and my weekends are different. So I'm all out of routine. Still haven't got this. Ugh. Anyway, thanks so much for bearing with me and still being here. I appreciate you all so much and I will see you next week. Bye. Hi, I'm Jem, an end myopia student following Jake Steiner's end myopia method to get rid of my glasses. That's not how I say it. Oh, don't do anything different. Actually, these are gross. We're getting rid of all sorts of 2020. No. Get back to 2020 vision and away from the year 2020. Oh man, I don't even want this. Okay. Jake Shed. <laughs> so six weeks is a very reasonable amount of time, I think. Wish I knew what was causing that. Just the wind? Weird. Anyway. I've given myself till mid-February. That's another six weeks. That would be too quick for a... Come on. Chill. Just give me 10 minutes without making this noise. I don't know what it is. I might need to find out. Hmm. Okay. September 15th to change into my N. Threes, why am I counting backwards? I need to count forwards, it goes up, not down. Otherwise I will run out of numbers. Okay. And then, and then another three, get a cool beverage, nice audio book, a sun hat. Hmm. Actually, that sounds quite nice. Dedicated AF time and what is this noise? So that is me, that is my end myopia, plan, goals, all of that. Oh, I got a message.